Ladies and gentlemen, this is Red Gaming Citicom video. Let us discuss PC gaming, at least the future of it, according to Tripwire's John Gibson, who are probably best known for Killing Floor. We're going to be primarily discussing Linux and Windows and the future of what it's going to hold for PC gaming. So, these are going to be some controversial comments, but I'll leave my opinions until pretty much the end. So anyway, starting things off, um, PC Gamer asked him, well, you're supporting Linux with Killing Floor 2, how do you feel about SteamOS so far? And he replied, we're liking it so far, it's been a challenge finding people that know Linux. We brought on a guy named Telly Terry Hendricks, and he was part of the Iculus crew. If you don't know who they are, they're a group of Linux developers, and one of them is Ryan Gordon. For the past 10 to 15 years, he's probably done about 90% of the Linux game ports in the world. Really talented guy. Yeah, I'd say he's pretty talented. That's a lot of games. He did the Linux port of Red Orchestra 1 and Killing Floor. He's done a lot of work with Valve on Steam OS. Terry, the guy we bought on, was part of the Iculus group. He really helped us going in the right direction up until Valve announced SteamOS. Nobody knew about any other game developers for Linux, so everyone was turning over every stone to try and find them. But we liked the idea of an open system. The design around game development has OS bloat removed so it can run as efficiently as possible. We've seen a lot recently with AMD's mantle trying to get around DirectX's inefficiencies, but OpenGL allows you to do that already. It's So it's a kind of a cool platform. Now this part is probably going to upset a few people, but regardless, I, I'm going to read this out slightly non-verbatim because I think they made a bit of a spelling booby. Um, basically, they asked, is SteamOS going to be able to take on Sony and Microsoft, it's one thing to say compete against the consoles, but what about Windows? And they said 100 perfect of Steam games, I'm going to say they're 100% of Steam games are on Windows and 10%, maybe 5% are on Linux. So, he responded, it'll just be like when digital took over retail. Steam didn't just turn on one night and then Walmart and Best Buy got freaked out because they weren't selling PC games anymore. It took two, three or four years, but it did happen. It will happen little by little at a time. And I think that's Valve's strategy. They're taking one step at a time and they know if they try to take a massive leap, they could stumble. But these are incremental steps, and even Valve say they're not going head to head against Microsoft and Sony. But I'm like, yeah, this year. But in five years or three years, I think they'll probably be going to head to head with them, and they'll probably be taking over. In general, for gaming, I think Linux will become like Windows is now. I think that every game is going to be on Linux eventually, so every game will be on Steam OS. Microsoft's done their best, and this is the controversial part. Microsoft's done their best to kill PC gaming for as long as I can remember. Having an OS that's actually not trying to kill gaming, well, that's going to be the very best and very good for games. I think it will just grow. Or maybe it won't and we'll put games on some other platform. But I think everything's going on with it. It's Valve's game to lose at this point. And anyway, he goes on to say a few other bits and pieces but don't aren't really pertinent, uh, mostly regarding on live and OIA and stuff like that. So anyway, what are my thoughts on this? Well, pretty strong words. Some people are definitely going to disagree when it comes to killing Windows, and I think there's two there's two points to this. Valve are definitely pushing in the right direction. And if you think about it, do you remember when Steam first started to come about? And you could certainly buy games, but then you could also go in the go to your local store. Um, in the UK, it would be like Game or uh, Game Station or PC World, or you know, you'd possibly order the game off of uh, I know, Amazon or whatever. But you know, you could buy it digitally, but most people didn't simply because we just a weren't used to it. B, our connections were slow as crap. You know, maybe 512 KB a meg. Depends, obviously, how lucky you were when you were were first using Steam. But, you know, a lot of people were using five, one megabyte connections at best at that point. And so it took quite a long time for us to accept it, I suppose. And right now, that's the problem with Linux. I've been doing a few virtual machine videos as well. You could check those out if you wish. If you're kind of curious about playing with Linux and you don't want to, you know, format your system, you should check those out. You could just search VirtualBox on the channel. And um, 
the basic premise of Linux is that it works pretty much how you would expect and that, that might not sound very obvious but what I mean by that is what you install on Linux is going to be really what the operating system is capable of um, you can run it without a GUI, you could run it as a pure web server, you could run it as like pretty much running everything at the same time and therefore Linux is very very good with allocating minimal amounts of resources and OpenGL even for the PC can handle things and obviously it depends on the version of OpenGL but certainly the later versions and handle pretty much tiled resources um, and pretty much everything else low level API. Microsoft are of course introducing DirectX 12 and I find it interesting he's pointing out that they're trying to kill PC gaming. I would argue until Microsoft had announced DX12 I would have completely concurred and to be honest <sighs> I don't think it was a good situation. Many would argue one of the reasons they were doing that is to try and promote their Xbox. But I feel that Microsoft have somewhat learned a lesson in this and it just doesn't really work for them trying to com control the piece of space because invariably what you do when you do that is you start shrinking the desktop market. How and why? Well, for a lot of PC gamers, if they were in a situation where the only real choice was to game on, on consoles, it's not, but I'm just merely going a hypothetical type of silly route here, but let's just assume it was, then you'll buy over an Xbox and a PC and Microsoft, if, unless you're doing like production work, let's say you're running like a website or, some, or something like that, you'll probably still be using a desktop, but you might just go with like an Apple or you, if you're just say doing web browsing and looking at YouTube or whatever, you might just go with something like buying a 10 inch tablet which doesn't really do Microsoft that much good in terms of pure sales. With that said, although I don't agree with his quote completely, one thing I would concur with is that Microsoft have made some boo-boos when it comes to PCs. Windows 8, well every single update it just seems to be getting more and more like Windows 7. The start menu, for example, when we first st saw it, or the start screen, I'm sorry, I'm using Windows 8, people were like, okay, that's great, but where's the version for non-touch screens? And I've, I've said this before, but it just, I just, I don't understand where they were coming from with it, particularly with servers. And now they're starting to move forward with it, but, you know, at this rate, it's probably going to be like late this year we get the start menu back. Although rumours have it it's going to be slightly earlier. Some rumours are saying uh, mid this year. Others are saying late this year. Others are even saying it's not going to come. Although I don't think that's going to be true in that we're going to have to wait Windows 9. Regardless, it's not a good situation. Because, you know, Windows 8 isn't bad. It It's, it's not bad. I don't have a problem with it. But I also don't like some of the features and functions of it. And one of the concerns that Valve have had, and they've mentioned this a couple of times, is regarding the marketplace. Having said that, you've got to remember that Valve have a vested interest in this. If you could simply buy the games via the marketplace, for someone like Valve, who is selling the games on a third-party system, it can put them off. You know, it could put, put off potential buyers. But then you've got Origin, um, Uplay, and all these other different services which are trying to sell, and there is that level of distrust. I don't personally want to. This is the thing for me, as a as like a power user, I'd consider myself. I like an operating system that's fully functional, but at the same time, the operating system. I don't want it to do everything without my telling it to. It's not even necessarily because it's wasting resources. It's more that. I just don't need those functions installed. So even assume it's not loading it into RAM, it doesn't matter to me. I just don't want the functions installed. And yeah, you can go through the pain, you know, you could, for example, make a light install of the application. So for example, you can pretty much remove all the things you don't want. It's just a pain in the butt though for a lot of users and it just adds the complexity. I don't necessarily know if Linux is going to be the future of gaming at any time soon, but my gut feeling is that you're probably going to want to start to get at least semi-familiar with Linux. That's my kind of gut, and I am as well. I'm starting to get used to it. As someone who 
pretty much, I wouldn't say avoided Linux, but I don't know it as well as I should, considering the amount of time I've used PCs, to be honest. i semi getting used to it, and I think that if you do get used to Linux, you're going to kind of be in the situation where you're, I wouldn't say learning another language, but you're also going to have a better understanding of systems in general and if games do start to use Linux, particularly SteamOS, and to be honest, here's the thing with the SteamOS, it, it is Linux, but at the same time it's it, Linux in the lightest sense possible. Yes, you can go to the desktop, but ultimately you don't really need to and I think that that's the key. For a lot of people, they don't give a crap about the desktop. Um, you know, or a lot of the functions, it, all they care about is just playing games, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see this situation where there's a dual boot going on. Very similar to, say, Mac uh, runs a dual boot with um, OS X and Windows. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a similar type of thing here. In fact, another option, um, and something I need to cover at some point, would be to run a VM with Windows, right? So you could be using that in seamless mode, like Windows um, in a VM, and be running, say, Linux in the background, which is another option. So your main operating system for gaming and everything else is that, but if you're trying to do production work, it would be, you know, having a VM with Windows, and that would be another way to work. I guess we're just going to have to see. It used to be a big deal running VMs. It used to be a big deal with all of these, you know, resources, but now it's not. You know, if you've got a, uh, just for example, a quad-core CPU, even without hyper-threading, you've pretty much got more than enough resources, and most systems now have at least 8 gigs of RAM. So, it's it's pretty good. You know, it's not really too much of a big deal. Of course, later on, when PS4 games are actually starting to utilize a bit more memory, but even so, we've got video cards which have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, whatever, by the time this becomes normal anyway. So some of this, you know, a lot of the graphics memory, a lot of the memory on consoles is being utilised for graphics anyway, art assets. I mean, you could check out the breakdowns, the post-mortems of either um, Order 1886 or Infamous Second Son, or even you know, The Last of Us or whatever, you can see what amount of memories being allocated to what and sure there is a lot for sound heaps and whatever else but a hell of a lot of it just goes towards textures and f and uh, g buffer and stuff like that so it does help offset anyway hopefully you've enjoyed the video i kind of went a bit rambly there so apologies for that but i'll see you soon take care and bye for now